Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, bettingangle.us, both free sites. It's August the 18th, 2020. This is my third video of the day. I feel it necessary because I just learned that one of my favorite boxing commentators, Paulie Malinaji, was fired by Showtime. Now, a few days ago, I was watching some fights on Showtime. And during the fights, I didn't hear Paulie Malinaji, and I missed him. I thought, man, what a shame Malinaji's not here. I didn't know why. I thought maybe he was on summer vacation. Maybe he was with his family. COVID's changed a lot of things. But I was surprised he wasn't there. He's excellent at his job. He has a great rapport with Al Bernstein. He adds a lot to the telecast. As a Showtime subscriber, I missed it. So, of course, I come to learn not that long ago that he was fired for supposedly racially insensitive remarks. Now, let me just pause here and just point out that boxing is a multi cultural mecca. People come to the sport from all kinds of backgrounds, genders, races, etc. It's one of the strengths of the sport. Personally, I don't believe that talent has a race, has a skin tone, has a gender, or has a sexual orientation. On my side, I'm just trying to showcase talent. And that takes me into many different backgrounds, races, origins, etc. Now, Pauli Malinaji, I'll just say this. I don't like that he was fired. You know, we all have bad days. We all use the wrong words from time to time. I just cannot believe that based on what I'm about to read, a media outlet would fire a talented sports commentator. Now, apparently Malinaji is sitting down, he's giving an interview with someone, they're talking about Devin Haney's statement that he would never lose to a white boy. Now let's be real here. Boxing is for grown folk. He's not the first person to say something like that. I remember Bernard Hopkins saying something like that before fighting Joe Calzaghe. Write the history of the sport has fighters calling themselves names like Irish so-and-so, the Brown Bomber, the Black Mamba. Right, that's the history of the sport. Right, even in fiction, a popular fighter called himself the Italian Stallion. That author is in the Boxing Hall of Fame. That's the sport. The sport's been multicultural for years. And understand, the sport has trends. If I mention a trend, it doesn't mean that I'm endorsing eugenics or genetic superiority. And so, the bottom line is, at different times, different groups in the sport of boxing are going to have different levels of success. And so I'm astonished that based on the following, Malinaji got fired. Again, he's talking to someone about Devin Haney's comments. So then, he says, he probably wasn't talking about Lomachenko. I assume he was talking about Luke Campbell, who I think the more viable opponent that Haney would be fighting. 
When you're in your early 20s, you probably don't express that very well. It's not something that's great to make racial in 2020, especially with so many racial tensions in the world. Boxing has had its course in history with certain demographics dominating more than others, right? Maybe a hundred years ago, Irish fighters were better. And then the Jews and the Italians came in. I think the African-American fighter became the most dominant in the sport in the 70s, 80s, and even 90s. It's the Eastern European fighters like Loma and Usyk that have become the dominant species in boxing. I think stating something like what Haney stated could be very dangerous. Folks, I don't believe in that statement. Pauli Malignaggi is saying anybody is inherently inferior to anyone else. What he's talking about really is sociology, isn't it? Isn't he telling you that over time, boxing has been dominated by different groups? Not that those groups are inherently superior to other groups, but just that sociologically. Groups that are trying to come up, right, at different times, are going to move into boxing. So forgive me. I just hope that these days, if someone inartfully explains themselves it is recorded doing so after spending years building their reputation years building their careers i'm hoping we would give that person the benefit of the doubt understand we all lose when people have to walk on eggshells like this Right? It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. If I pointed out that in the 1950s, there were a lot of Italian-American boxers, maybe more than there are today, is that a racist statement? Or is that a descriptive statement? Am I just describing things? Or am I engaged in some kind of Hitler-esque eugenics talk? So as I see it, Pauli Malignaggi deserved the benefit of the doubt. Right? He's been a commentator for a long time. His statement here, who exactly is he denigrating? His statement here talks about Irish fighters a hundred years ago, Jews and the Italians came in, African-American fighters. Which group is he denigrating as he talks about the fact that at different times in history, right, different groups had a bigger share of the success in boxing. And so let's face it, we're in an era right now, it wasn't so long ago that you had the Berlin Wall. We're in an era right now where the Berlin Wall has come down, the Eastern European athlete has many more opportunities. We as boxing fans now have the opportunity to learn more about the sport online, on YouTube, on Amazon Prime, on HBO, on Showtime, on The Zone, on ESPN Plus. We're seeing fighters from all over the world. You even have amateur films now of fighters online. Right in the world of boxing, we praise guys who represent their countries in amateur events like the Olympics. Guys come into the ring with the flag of their country. It's an international village, isn't it? 
I just don't understand how we could end a guy's career because the guy is pointing out that a hundred years ago Irish guys had a lot of success in boxing then other groups came in the African-American fighters been dominant for decades right he named 70s 80s and 90s you mean to tell me we've reached a point where the social censorship is stopped is such that that gets you fired that's an outrage I hope one of these other boxing outfits the zone ESPN plus wherever grabs Paulie Malinaji It'd be a great addition to their network, right? Give Paulie an opportunity to explain himself. I think this is an outrage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you feel I'm being an Uncle Tom here, go ahead, lay it out in the comment section of this video. If you feel that Things have gotten a bit too PC. Right? I I can't believe I'm a subscriber to Showtime. <laughs> and they're fiery guys because the guy dares to mention that years ago Irish fighters had a lot of success. That there were Jewish fighters like Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum, Benny Leonard, who had a lot of success. What? <laughs> <laughs> that that African American fighters had a lot of success in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. Right? That's offensive these days. Crazy. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let's keep boxing international. Let's celebrate talent. Let's not get hypersensitive. When people talk about boxing's history, boxing today, elite fighters today. Let me point out too, that when he mentions Eastern European fighters, right? I, I, wow. Are Loma and Usyk not among the best in boxing? Isn't his real message not one of exclusion, but one of inclusion. Pointing out that a new group is now in boxing having a lot of success. Why is that offensive? Let me know in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.